Hey everybody, I'm back, Jimmy Smith. This week I'm doing something a little different. So instead of, in the lead up to 300, having one, you know, breakdown of UFC 300, they're going to be all week, man, leading up to UFC 300. I'm breaking down every single main event fight. Now there's plenty that I could do all the way from the undercard up, but I'm going to stick to the main card. Every day you're going to get a breakdown, a long one, about each and every single fight. Just because it's so big and the fights are so relevant and there's so much to dive into. So... Naturally, we're starting off on the main event with a fight that a lot of people think is controversial for the main event. Why? Bo Nickel, Cody Brundage, and the middleweight division. I want to dive in a little bit about, about why I think this fight is happening where it's happening. Number one, um, when I was with the WWE and, you know, Monday Night Raw is a three-hour show, Corey Graves would tell me, he would say, there's an art to a three-hour show. Three hours is a long time to get people sitting there waiting. If you start off, which they did sometimes with, like, these banger matches— you'd notice the crowd would kind of run out of energy at a certain point. They would just, they've been screaming for, you know, an hour and a half. They, just, they don't have a lot to give by the time the, the, the final match uh, happens. So there was a pacing where they'd break it up with like the 24-7 title. That was still a thing. What they call haha in in the pro wrestling business. So we need some haha here. You know, Vince McMahon, we need some haha with this. You know, to like give the fans a break or, you know, a Miz TV segment or something to where they're not having to scream their heads off the whole time. Obviously very different pro wrestling and, and, and MMA, which is, you know, unscripted real sports. But the idea of you have a card full of veteran relevant fights, that one kind of interesting, okay, what is this doing here kind of fight, I, I think is good to break things up. I think it's a good start to the show. Um, you're showcasing, you're essentially you're showcasing Bo Nickel. From a betting perspective, there's no reason to bet Bo Nickel unless you're willing to bet your entire life savings, hoping he makes you some money. And obviously, bet the dog. Bet Cody Brundage. Right now, it's like plus a thousand or something ridiculous. It, it, it's absurd what, what a favorite Bo Nickel is. There are a couple things to keep in mind. This is happening. First off, it kind of breaks things up a little bit. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting and different to have this on the main event, which is part of it. The other part of it that people don't realize is nowadays, in modern MMA, can a wrestler have an international career and have time to make an MMA career afterward? DC did it, meaning he was an NCAA finalist, made a couple of Olympic teams. He didn't start MMA until he was 30. That was 15 years ago. 2009 is when DC made his MMA debut. In modern MMA, 15 years after that, can somebody try out, even briefly, which, which Bo Nickel had a brief international career, because he had David Taylor in front of him, for people who don't know. Uh, David Taylor was in his weight class. He was never going to beat David Taylor. That's why he didn't make an Olympic team or a world team or anything like that. So he tried the, uh, the international scene for a little bit, didn't make it, went to MMA. So this is a guy who's 5-0, and five finishes, five first-rounders, He's 28 years old. What the UFC realizes is he's a little old. They're not going to get a ton of years out of him. If he goes a regular route, which is, you know, Dana White's contender series, a, a regular career, all this stuff, he would just be, you know, early 30s before he got anywhere. And he just doesn't have enough years to get anything done. Back in the day when you had Kevin Jackson, Mark Schultz, uh, Mark Coleman, obviously uh, made in the Olympics, those guys could start late. Randy Couture got his start in MMA at 33. Well, yeah, that was a long time ago when you could come in with just wrestling and do really, really well. Nowadays, you have to have a complete skill set and the years it takes to build that skill set. If you are at the elite level of freestyle wrestling until you're 26, 27, you're getting a very late start in this. And do you have time to catch up? Ben Askren, great example, made an Olympic team, but by the time he started MMA, the only skill set he really had was great wrestling, good submission game, and his striking was just god-awful. You just can't fill in all those gaps in the amount of time you have. Most wrestlers in MMA were an All-American once or twice. Meaning they're not going to make an Olympic team. They know they're not going to make. They're not going to be a world champion. So they go from college straight into MMA. You know, Michael Chandler fifth at, at Mizzou. You know, Colby Covington was against uh, fifth at, at Oregon State. So like, yeah, I'm not going to be great. So I, I start my my MMA career. Right, Justin Gaethje seventh. Okay, so if you're an All American, aren't you top eight? That's pretty good. You start right away. You start when you're 22, 21 years old. You have time. So the reason they're pushing. Bo Nickel so hard is they realize they only have a few years before he reaches his peak and it might be too late. So that's part of the reason for this push. So Bo Nickel having all these fast finishes, the key to this fight to me, if I'm in Brundage's corner, if I'm his, his corner man, if I'm his coach or whatever, my thing, get out of that first round. Meaning I don't care if it's hands up, jabbing the whole time, moving, sticking, you know, whatever it is. Close guard, just don't get your ass kicked. Remember, you're not dealing with a guy who's advanced at anything but wrestling. His striking's good. He's naturally powerful. He's a heavy-handed guy. 
but his striking hasn't developed very much. His submission game hasn't developed very much. It's okay. He has what I call wrestler's jujitsu. Arm triangles, rear naked choke, guillotine. Right, The simple, basic stuff that comes from positions you find in wrestling. Those are the submissions that, that wrestlers are just like automatically really good at. Stay out of those things and get out of round number one. That's a, I don't care if it's a 10-8 round. I don't care if it's a 10-7 round. As long as you are consciously walking back to your corner at the end of round one, that is a huge victory. Because then those doubts start creeping into your head. You know, pacing and gas and all these things are kind of mercurial, right? I did all this work. My gas should be great. And yet it feels like it's going because it's tied to how you see yourself and how you feel you're doing. And your your fears and your worries and all these things affect your gas tank. Um, They affect your pacing. They affect everything. And the moment you have this amazing finisher and you start dragging him into even comparatively deep waters, meaning it's a three-round fight. If you can get them into round three, you can get them like, oh, man, I've finished everybody else. Well, you know, why is this stuff I did to get these other guys out of here not working on this guy? Whatever it is. Now, Brundage himself is just experienced. He's just, he doesn't do anything exceptionally well. You know, he, he, he's a finisher in his own right. You know, uh, eight finishes in ten fights, uh, in ten wins. You know, the, the guy tends to get it done, right? But he's been stuck and is continuing continue to be stuck kind of that, at that middle middle level. Has never fought a step-up guy. Has never beaten a step-up guy. Came in uh, originally through the contender series. Lost in the contender series. Um, has been up and down in the UFC. Not one name worth the fart in a windstorm. Um, not one name that he's he's beaten or one that he's lost to. The, his only upside here is he has cage time. He's 10-5. and five. He's had 15 freaking fights. You know, that means something. He has won by decision. He has lost by decision. He's seen the end of fights. You're, you're facing a guy who, when we find those holes in his game, they haven't yet. When we find them, they're going to be a bit broader than most. And, and what I mean by that is uh, a well-rounded fighter with 15, 20 fights, maybe his striking isn't super-duper elite, but it's pretty good. Maybe his wrestling isn't super-duper elite, but it's pretty good for MMA. We don't know about Bo Nickel in the long haul. When you knock somebody out with your first punch... Right, if you knock somebody out in 30 seconds, I, well, I don't know how good your striking is. I, I'm not sure. I haven't seen everything you need you you, you need to do. Um, I remember Ben Askren calling his fights in Bellator when he fought Jay Haran, who you know wrestled D1 at Hofstra, not an All-American or anything, not anybody great. As soon as he had to strike, as soon as Jay Haran stopped his takedown a couple times, and he had to bang, you were like, oh my god, this is a different guy. Once again, once we saw the gaps. We were like, oh, man, like he really can't strike at all. You know, had the wrestling, had a decent submission game. But, man, as soon as that one thing didn't work and he was forced to try other things out, we saw how limited he was. Bo Nickel, I'm not saying Bo Nickel's limited. I'm saying if you're Cody Brundage, we're going to uh, take him to the third round and we're going to try a wide variety of techniques, right? Test every single defensive and offensive hole, see what we can find here. That's what I would do if I were his coach, right? Start out with the leg kicks, good combinations, whatever it is. You're going to find the gaps because he hasn't had time to learn everything. Find those gaps, keep the pressure on, get out of the first round, make it about experience. Then later on, if you make it about experience, you can then make it about grit and tenacity and heart and all those things we haven't tested in Bo Nickel. Once again, not saying he doesn't have those things, but see if we can test them late into a fight, even though it's only a three-rounder. So if I'm Cody Brunich, I'm... Looking for that that gut check third round where maybe I'm hurt, maybe he's done some good things, maybe he's taken me down, but he's never seen a round three and try to test him. Bo Nickel, stick to your strengths, right? You are 28 years old, like I said. Probably haven't learned everything you need to in MMA. You're still developing and growing. Don't try to freaking, you know, reinvent the wheel. Don't try to, which a lot of fighters do, man. I've seen it a million times. They're good wrestlers or great wrestlers in some cases, and they learn a one, two, three combination. They think they're Sugar Ray Robinson. I'm not saying it's not good to have excellent striking, but Jesus, don't test it out every chance you get. There's kind of this ego thing about, I'm going to show that I'm, don't do that, <laughs> right? Bo Nichols got a slick takedown. Yes, he has some knockouts, but get the takedown, make it about your wrestling where you know you're better than your opponent. Build all those things in the gym that you need to be a professional fighter. But don't go into a professional fight, UFC 300, big lights, opening the main card, and try to show everybody what you got. It's not going to work. So betting-wise, just bet on Cody Brundage. Put 100 bucks. See if you can make a lot of money. It's not worth betting on Bo Nickel. Going over or under it depends entirely on who you think is going to win. If it's if it's Bo Nickel, it's probably short. If it's Cody Brundage, it's almost certainly late. So this with the odds... Odds on this one, I would completely stay away from it. But, you know, if you're Cody Brundage, drag it into deep water. See if you can test all the weaknesses in bone nickel. All right.
Like, subscribe, let me know what you think in the comment section. Appreciate you.